Hello, welcome to Facebook Live uh, Financial Fit Fridays, I think we decided to call this a yep. uh, little episode. Uh, but with school right around the corner this after this weekend and going into next week, uh, we're going to talk a little college savings. A lot of schools, colleges have started already. Um, so, but the high schools, the most important year is your high school years, I think, right? Yes, <laughs> At least, that's what I heard. They, yeah, that's what they say anyway. As you get older, but when you're in high school, you can't wait for it to be over. Uh, quickest four years of your life is high school, I think. Um, I doubted that when I was in high school, but that's what people say. Looking back. Um, yeah, looking back on it, it was a very interesting time. But now that we're talking about college savings and where should people save for college, um, as we go into the school season. If you haven't read our article in the last month's Amherst B, or actually the B's, we're in nine different papers. We had an article on saving for college in that paper. So look back at it um, before you burn it for your last bonfire over the holiday weekend. Um, read the article first and then burn it um, going forward. Um, but we like to take 10, 15 minutes of your time to go over some saving for college and just let you know we are located in Williamsville, New York, uh, right on Transit Road across from the Eastern Hills Mall, or what was the Eastern Hills Mall, and this soon to be the new Raymore and Flanagan across the street, a little cheap plug, I guess, for them. They're not paying me. I wish they were. Uh, but we'll give them a plug over there across the street and Duff's Good Chicken Wings. Uh, but anyways, I'll start off by asking Tanya a few questions here. and. Um, where is she seeing people that are saving for college in today's environment? Well, I got back. I just dropped my first child off at, uh, at his, co his college, and it was, I don't know, sad and exciting. And the uh, three places that I know that are good, decent places, good things to places to put your money is, of course, the 529s. Uh, there's something called the Upma, uh, Upma and another one called Nyeri Roth. If we talk about the 529s, uh, they've become a really actually good place to save money. Um, a number of years back, the fees were very expensive, but especially in New York State, which if you live in New York State, you can get a, uh, a tax credit for it. Uh, and tax, tax, tax deduction. deduction. I knew I said that wrong. The tax <laughs> deduction as soon as it came out. Uh, so you get a tax deduction for it. Uh, you can put quite a bit in. Just remember that all of it does end up needing to go. One of the the only downside to that is that it's supposed to be for education. Uh, however, it's also I can tell you from personal experience really easy to put money into it and then to pull money out of it. We, I just did it for my son, and most school, most colleges have uh, the ability to literally like you know, push a, click a button and the money will come, go straight from the 529 to uh, the, the, the school of your choice. The other thing is, is, and the only thing you have to be a little bit aware of, uh, although there are no ta tax implications if they go straight, straight to the school, uh, you will get a 1099 and it will either be for the child or for the parent. If it comes to the parent's uh, savings account, which is actually what I did, and then put into the um, 529, put into the college, uh, you'll get the 1099 uh, under your name. It just It's just information. Whereas if it goes straight to the school or if it comes through your child, you'll get the 1099 under their child's name. You don't have to be concerned about it. That's just where the paperwork goes. But, but your Go son ahead. goes to school in Ohio. Can he yes. use a New York State plan? for? That's, yes, it, oh, it okay. does not matter. It's, you know, it's for whatever education. It can go anywhere. So that's a good question. We get that college. question a lot. Like Yes, that is true. My kid goes to... Notre Dame. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So so that's the 529 plan. Then there's the UPMAs. UPMAs are when you put assets into your child's name. So the upside of that is if it's in your child's name and they're uh, underage, uh, they, it, everything is taxed at the child's tax. However, the downside to that is, is that at the age of 21, it is theirs. So whatever is left in there might not go where you want it to go because they own it. 
Um, so, so if I want that new Corvette at 21, I can buy it. That is exactly <laughs> right. If there's enough left in there, they, they can take it and run with it. Um, so that's the Anutma. And then the other one is an IRA Roth. And that, that's a nice product because what you can do is it's saving for both education and retirement. Uh, one of the big things we as financial planners talk to people about is the fact that uh, you can take loans and help your child uh, with their education. You can't take loans on your own retirement. So making sure, no matter, even though we're talking about saving for education for your kids, you, the very first thing you wanna be doing is saving for your retirement and then looking at the education for your children. So a few things on the 529, um, people think, or we've come across people that contribute to an Alaska plan or an Illinois plan or California or Arizona, you name a different state. One of the things that people don't understand is if you contribute to an out-of-state 529 plan that's approved, you don't get the New York state tax credit for contributing to those plans. And in New York, there's two plans that are available for the tax credit or tax deduction. See, I, said credit. I got it. <laughs> yeah, it tax happens. Tax. Um, is the JP Morgan advisor plan or the Vanguard direct plan? Um, the Vanguard direct plan is a great option, low fees, low contribution rates. I mean, we're not here to promote any one plan, uh, but with the Vanguard so plan, the New York saves.org, uh, is a great low cost option for yes. people that just want to put money away at low, low amounts where the advisor plan is a little bit more expensive to start and the minimum contributions are a little bit higher on the for that 529. The other thing on a 529 is the ease of managing it. Um, the Vanguard plan gives you that ease. Where is the advisor plan? If you're working with an advisor that offers that plan, the advisor can help you manage those plans as well. Um, the other thing with the 529 that people don't realize is the you promise side of it. Oh, that's right. Where I can register my bonus cards, my credit cards, those different cards that build points. Not only am I getting points on my credit card, but certain products give you money back to that you promise account that you can transfer into your 529 as well. So there's a lot of interesting ways to save for college that people don't take advantage of that cost no money to, you know, every little dollar helps. Another thing with the 529 plans is you can put, you know, there's a certain amount that you're supposed to be able to put in with uh, 529 plans. If you haven't put anything in, but you want to start something up, you can put a certain amount in and take it over, having it over the, those, the next five years. So, you know, whereas with the Roth, you can only put a certain amount in. If you are looking at wanting to, you know, you have some money that you want to do that, a 529 plan is a better, better option for that. Yeah, so if you're married filing joint, uh, the maximum deduction for a given year is ten thousand dollars. Right. You can deduct uh, single filing or filing single. You don't necessarily have to be uh, married to file jointly. If you're married filing separately, then you're limited to five thousand uh, dollar deduction. You can put in, like right. you said, up you to sixty five thousand. Right. But then you can year. take right, and then you can take the. But then you can't put in right. go for the direction over a, a series of years. So, but so stay under those gifting limits, that's right? And they will index based on inflation. Uh, the next thing that we wanted to touch on real quick, because Tanya just went through it, was the whole FAFSA process. Process. Um, you know, I just want to go over a few numbers, and I might have to look at my notes for these numbers, um, and then Tanya could talk about the FAFSA process. 20% of the FAFSA is the student's assets. So that's where she was saying about the UPMA and UGMA. 50% mm -hmm. uh, is the student's income. So if they're like a Mark Zuckerberg creating Facebook in their dorm, they're probably not getting any financial aid. Um, three to 6% is parents' um, assets and 22 to 47% is the parent's income. So we'll just talk quickly about the FAFSA process going forward. The FAFSA process will start October 1st. It does that pretty much every year. Uh, and as a parent of a senior last year, my first one, I noticed that there were a lot of parents that were really very um, worried about how it was going to work and how they were going to be able to do this. And I know quite a number of them uh, paid some really good money to have someone else do it. 
uh, I went through the process and it really isn't all that tough. You don't need to be worried or scared or uh, about doing it. Just sit down. It'll take you about 45 minutes and it asks you questions. Uh, one of the really nice things is about the income and information. They now will let you download from the IRS. So you literally just what what all the information the IRS has on you, you can put in the num, you know, whatever they connect with the IRS and it downloads. Um, then you really just need to uh, put in your assets. And please remember that uh, your retirement assets, so IRAs, 401ks, IRA Ross, those kinds of things, 403Bs, do not do not count as assets on the FAFSA, which is what you put in to find out if you can, you know, what sort of help or what sort of, um, you know, uh, options your child has as far as getting money. Um, now, it really, it really was easy. Uh, so don't be, don't be concerned about it. Just sit down and, and run through it. Now, speaking of, you have a son that's going to be a senior in high school. I, I have another one. That's going to be a sophomore. Yes. Um, what advice would you give the seniors and people entering their junior year, which is a big year for students as well. Oh, let's see. Uh, one of the big things I would say, hey, t do take a look at scholarships. There are lots of scholarships out there. Uh, I know the high school that my kids go to, they offer like lists of scholarships and, you know, so, and, and to get started on, um, on looking for those scholarships. Start looking at colleges, definitely. If you haven't already, you want to think about eight to 10 colleges. Sometimes people like more, but it's a good number. You know, you can take a look at what the, how much it's gonna cost. You can take a look at what your grades are and whether it'll fit in. Um, there are also programs at a number of schools now that will actually, you can take a class and they will walk you through the program. So the school that my kids go to, my older son took it and my younger son is going to take it. And literally, he, they would come home and, okay, now we have to write our essay, and now we have to do this, and now we have to do that. And, and FAF, you know, mom, FAFSA is, you know, next weekend, you know, with the on Monday, and you have to do that, that. There are teachers that can help these kids, and their guidance can help these kids through this, pro, your, your kids through your process. Uh, just have a little bit of fun with it, uh, and make sure that you use the Common App and make sure that you answer all the common app. A lot of times you answer, there's a whole common part of it that you can do really quickly, but then when you go and look at the specific colleges, each college might have, well, I'd like you to do another essay, and each of the essays may be very different, or they might have something that they want you to discuss that maybe they want extra to know more things about what you do as extracurricular activities. And that, that's the final thing, especially if you're a junior, not even, the senior's okay, but definitely a junior, they like seeing extracurricular activities. It's great if you have a 95 average, awesome. But if they, if they don't see that you've done anything outside of schoolwork, they're, they, a lot, many schools are more likely to take the kid who has a slightly lower grade point average with all that they've done a number of things. So get involved. Get involved. It doesn't mean you have to join the student council. Join the chess club or join the ping pong club or go out and do volunteer outside of school. All of that counts. Having a job counts. Make sure you put that down, that you are, it shows that you're responsible and capable of handling yourself out in the community. The basket weaving course, as somebody just said the, basket the other weaving day. Course. That sounds great. Uh, I took basket weaving in college. Um, I did play ping pong in college, but uh, that was more for fun. Uh, but that's some great advice. And, you know, sitting on the board of uh, the Academy of Finance and the West Anka Schools, you know, we have career days and we're constantly talking to the students. But some great resources is savingforcollege.com. Uh, I believe it's a guy out of Rochester who runs that website. Great website for all the information that you you need uh, linking up the youpromise.com to your your credit cards or your uh, shoppers club cards and every other tag that you have for discounts um, get some free money uh, for that and obviously your schools your guidance counselors at school um, some of them are very well versed in they have the tons of information and they you know and, and and just and that's the other, the scholarships don't assume because you are you know you have an 85 average that everybody else is going to get a scholarship and you aren't that's a good average there are scholarships 
out there that can be very much tailored to what you want to do and where you want to go. And the extra Enjoy. stuff is huge as well. Exactly. We, I mean, when we interview people, what do you do outside of your normal everyday work? Yep. Um, what activities do you do? That's right. What what uh, projects are you volunteering with, or what are what's near and dear to your heart yep. that you can volunteer for and give back? Um, but whether it's you know what what's the other one? Oh, sports is going to provide me my college yeah. scholarship. <laughs> it doesn't seem to happen very often. <laughs> right. Um, so. Just a few things to take a look at as you're going through. And if you have any other questions, you can certainly reach out to Tanya and myself uh, for some of the college. I mean, we can, we were talking earlier today. It could, we could spend hours just talking about college savings and, and different things on the whole co college front. But we just wanted to give you a glimpse today of some of the things that you should take a look at. And I know her and I are very much proponents of the New York State 529. Yes. We said New York State, just so yes. you can get a little tax advantage for doing that. And again, like Tanya just mentioned, you don't have to live in New York uh, or have to go to college right. to go to New York to uh, take advantage of that. Yes. So with that, uh, certainly send us your Topics for next session, it will be just Tanya. I will not be in town for next Friday, but Tanya will continue the weekly advice channel. We also have a seminar coming up in September. Look at our Facebook page for that posting. And if you're a current client, look at your email. You should have got an email on our seminar uh, where the market's heading. Uh, we have a gentleman, Michael from Cryx, I think you say his last name, from FlexShares coming in to do a presentation um, on the economy and where the market's heading for the next year or so. So with that, send us your questions. If not, we'll see you next week. Thank you. See you next week. Thanks.